Hello everyone and welcome to a very special episode of Katha by Shraddha. A very Merry Christmas to everyone and a Happy New Year. I got to thinking towards the end of this year about the challenges that all of us have faced but also I thought about the amazing gifts and the amazing opportunities that this year has afforded us. One of them is a gift that I can never forget that from the comfort of my home I could attend virtual storytelling sessions from across the world and today I would like to bring to you a special amalgamation of two of these stories. One of the stories was actually a story song that I heard when I attended the virtual storytelling session of storytellers of Central Ohio, Soko, and the other was as part of Kathastu, a storytelling event run by Story Nest. These stories come from two incredible storytellers and extremely kind and generous individuals. The first story song is by Miss Joni Callum, who lives in Ohio, and the other story is by Mr. Tony Cranston, who lives in London. These two individuals have been extremely generous in giving me permission to share their stories with you. Joni's song is based on a Yiddish saying, Gamze Yavor, which means this too shall pass, that change is inevitable. And when, if you're really happy, there are times when that happiness will not last. And if you're really low and sad, there are also times when that will also pass and you will be happy again. And that is a very, very strong message that is echoing around the world and that we need to repeat to ourselves over and over again. Gamze Yavor. The other story that I will be bringing to you today is actually a personal narrative by Tony Cranston and it's about a time when he visited Ukraine as a storyteller. Let's begin with Gamze Yavor. Gamze Yavor This too shall pass Life's full of changes Some slow, some fast There are good times and bad Of this you can be sure Nothing lasts forever Gamze Some slow, some fast There are good times and bad Of this you can be sure Nothing lasts forever Gamze Yavor Fortunes come and fortunes go Empires fall and rise It's not what you have that matters who you are inside. Gamze Yavor, this too shall pass. Life's full of changes, some slow, some fast. There are good times and bad of this you can be sure. Nothing lasts forever. Gamze Ever since I've heard the song by Joni, the tune has been stuck in my mind. 
And every time I need some solace or some peace, I start humming that tune. I am so happy to be able to share with you today. Thanks to Joni Callum. If you click on the card that's showing up there, you will find a link to Joni's original song on YouTube. And now to take you to Tony's personal narrative. Now, Tony is an amazing individual who has been a storyteller for many, many years, and he's traveled the world telling stories. One time, when he was in Russia, he heard that there was a story that he had to go to a certain place to listen to, and that he must gather that story for his bag of stories. So he traveled about 60 miles north of Ukraine to this beautiful hotel. It had a lovely large foyer, huge corridors, beautiful rooms. And when Tony went, it was summer and he got a room to stay. But he heard that if he wanted to visit in winter, especially near Christmas time, they were always, always full. You had to make a booking years in advance if you wanted to visit this hotel in Christmas. And he heard incredible stories of how people would check in and the hotel would be overflowing. People would be sleeping in the corridors. There would be three people to a room paying full price. People would be sleeping in the foyer, down in the kitchens, just everywhere. And he wondered, he wondered about what the story was behind that. And it was because of this. And this is the story that Tony narrated. So when he went and talked to the hotel management, he heard that in 1910, Ukraine was experiencing an incredibly, incredibly fierce winter. It was very, very, very cold. It was the coldest winter on record till then. And they called it actually the iron winter because if you had a piece of iron, you could actually break it, you could snap it with your hands, it would become that brittle, it was so cold. But if you had a piece of wood, you wouldn't be able to break it. It would be as hard as iron, you just couldn't chop it or cut it. And that's why they call that winter the iron winter. Now, during this time, the hotel was run by an incredibly generous person. But there were no customers. It was so incredibly cold. There was no one coming there and no one staying in the hotel. So slowly, slowly, he had to let go of his staff. He let go of the chef. He let go of the chambermaids. He let go of all the cleaners. He let go of all the waiters in the hotel. And slowly he started downsizing and shutting down. And, you know, he was not making any money. And it was very difficult for him to survive the winter because the season was so poor. Now, one night, this hotel owner heard a knock on the door. And he was thrilled. He thought, oh, finally, someone has come to stay at my hotel. So he opened the very large doors. They creaked open. And outside, it was snowing, and it was a blistery storm going on. And in the faint light, he saw this really raggedy old man. He had a wispy hair on his head, a very thin, wispy mustache, very straggly, white, wispy beard, a very old man. He had creases on his face. He looked so tired and hungry. He was wearing very old and straggly clothes. He didn't even have footwear on his feet. They were just wrapped up in old rags. And he asked the hotel owner, Sir, can I stay for the night? I'm hungry. I would need a room for a night and a meal. And the hotel owner was thrilled. He said, yes, yes, of course. A room for the night and a meal, that would be three rubles. The old man turned out his pockets. and They were empty. He said, I'm so sorry. I do not have any money to give you. But if you turn me away in this night, I will die. Please, can I have a meal and a room to stay? Now the hotel owner was extremely kind and generous and he could see that if he turned this old man away in that dark wintry night, he would surely die. So he said, okay, it's all right, come on in. 
and he lit up the fire in the grand hotel and he brought a sofa close to the fire and he said, sit down, let me go down to the kitchens and see what I can whip up for you. And the hotel owner went down to the kitchen as the man sat by the fire and warmed his hands. And in the kitchen, he cooked some borscht soup. Now, borscht soup is made from beetroot and it's extremely, it's a warm broth and it's extremely hearty. It's a very hearty soup and it really warms you up and it's very sweet, it's, it's perfect for winter. So he made some borscht soup and he offered it to the old man. And the old man started slurping it up. He also had a half loaf of rye bread by the side that he was tearing chunks out of and dipping in the soup and eating it. And he was having this very hearty meal and the beetroot was you know, dripping all over his face, but he wouldn't stop to even wipe it. He was so hungry. And finally, he sat back and he gave the biggest smile the hotel owner had ever seen. And the hotel owner smiled back and said, are you satisfied now? And the man said, oh yes, oh yes, I am so satisfied. Thank you. And the hotel owner said, you know, you can just sleep here on the sofa and uh, I'm going to go to my room and sleep and I will see you in the morning. But the old man said, you won't see me in the morning. I will be gone by the time you wake up. But thank you for your hospitality. And be rest assured, I will pay you those three rubles one day. One day I will pay back those three rubles that I owe you. And the hotel owner started laughing and he said, oh, you know what, don't, don't worry about it. You know, I, you've given me such happiness that I was able to give you food when you were hungry and able to give you a roof over your head when you needed shelter. It's okay, you don't have to pay me. And anyway, you've paid me back because you look so funny. You have all these red stains on your beard as the beetroot soup is dribbling down your beard and you look quite a sight. And you know, I, I'll, I'll get a good laugh when I remember a sight like this. So. Don't worry about the three rubles. But the man said, no, no, I will pay you back. And the hotel owner said, okay, fine. And he went off to bed. And sure enough, the next morning when he woke up and came, the old man was gone. And as he started going about his day, suddenly he heard some bells ringing. And when he looked out of the window, he saw all of these sleighs that were, you know, drawn by horses pulling up to his hotel. Finally, guests, hotel guests were arriving and asking if he had place for them, if they could book a room and stay for some nights. And they kept coming and they kept coming and they kept coming and finally the hotel was full and it was overflowing and he had the best winter season ever. There were so many guests that they were sleeping three to a room. They were sleeping in the corridors. They were sleeping in the foyer. They were, they were sleeping near the fireplace. They were sleeping down the kitchens even. And he just had the best season that he ever had in that coldest winter that Ukraine ever had. And when Easter came up, when the thaw was starting and spring was around the corner and the winter was starting to recede and the snow was starting to melt, the hotel owner, who was a, quite a religious man, he decided, let me go to the cathedral in Moscow, St. Basil's Cathedral in Moscow, just to say thank you, thank you to God for giving me the best season I've ever had at my hotel. So he traveled to Moscow and he went into St. Basil's Cathedral. You know the cathedral that's the really big one with the mushroom-like domes that you see whenever you look up you know, pictures for Russia mostly? or Moscow for that matter, um, he went into this cathedral. It was huge and it was dark inside. But along the walls inside, there were these icon pictures of saints. So there was St. Patrick, St. John, St. Margaret, and all, all the pictures over there. But in one corner, there was one icon picture that caught his eye. And he went closer to take a closer look. And he stared at that picture and suddenly it dawned on him that this particular picture looked extremely familiar. It was of a man with wispy white hair, a wispy thin moustache and a wispy straggly white beard. And when he looked closer, he saw red stains 
beetroot stains on that beard. And he read the name below the icon picture and it said, Saint Nicholas. Now, I'm sure you know who Saint Nicholas is, but if you don't, he was the original Santa Claus, the real Santa Claus. And the hotel owner was so overwhelmed and just had this immense sense of gratitude and thankfulness that he, he just bowed and then he, he decided to, to light a candle and keep it in front of this icon picture to say his thank you. So he went and got a candle and there was a trough in the front of all of these icon pictures where you could actually, you know, dig a bit of hole in the, in the sand that was there and you could put your candle in there and light it and say a prayer. So he started digging a hole and pushing the candle in, in and in and the candle hit something hard. So he took the candle out and he dug with his finger and he found one ruble and he dug some more and he found another ruble and he dug some more and he found another ruble. He found three rubles. So he put the candle in and then he lit the candle and he bowed his head and gave a silent prayer of gratitude and said, thank you, St. Nicholas. And when he looked up from his prayer, he saw that the red stains on St. Nicholas's beard had vanished. And there was an incredibly happy smile on St. Nicholas's face. And even now as I'm telling you that story, I can feel the shivers going down my spine because this is indeed a true story. And the narration that I gave you was a personal narrative told by Tony during Kathastu a storytelling festival by StoryNest that I heard on their virtual storytelling event. And I'm so incredibly thrilled to be able to bring to you these two stories, Gamse Yavor by Joni and The Season of Giving by Tony Cranston. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful, wonderful Christmas and a very happy 2021. Bye.